Hello, welcome back to another 1001 Beers You Must Try Before You Die. Um, I have another Belgian beer, which is very exciting. Uh, I only found this the other day by accident uh, in a beer shop I was in waiting for friends who are running late. So it's a, a nice serendipitous moment there. Uh, this beer, first brewed, it says circa 1985, so don't they actually really know. Uh, it's 8% and it is our beer. Uh, I'd never heard of it or seen it before uh, I saw it in the shop, but I knew it was on the list. It's brewed by Didol Brewers, which means um, Mad Brewers in, uh, I presume, Flemish. Um, I don't know, it doesn't, yeah, it sounds more like it's a Flemish part of Belgium rather than the French-speaking part. So, uh, it's got, the, the label is just a bit odd. I mean, at the top here is a bow, which... I've no idea what that's there for, and there's a parrot. Again, it makes no. It doesn't appear to make any coherent sense. And actually, in the book, it doesn't explain why those two things are there. Uh, so we'll give it a go, I suppose. Um, it's the same thing on top here. Okay. I don't know whether that's the best before on top or whether that's when it was made. It's January twenty eighteen, which it is now. So hopefully, that's when it was made. <laughs> I don't want, I hope that's not best before. Um, right. So apparently these guys, the brothers who started this brewery, and they apparently they single-handedly started a microbrewery revolution in Belgium. Um, there isn't a, I'm trying to say what it's about. It, so the name means Arab, but also beer from the Arab parrot. And this is the Arab parrot, apparently, but it doesn't explain why. Uh, that I, No idea why there's a parrot on there. Um... Okay, so I'll do the taste notes and I'll tell you a little about how they make the beer as well, which is fairly interesting. Um, so, it's a, so it's a blonde, strong ale. Uh, and that's, that's the style. So that's, I've got a nice if in doubt about, there's no, there's no picture on this, so I can't see what glass they say to use. And if in doubt, I use my chalice glass, which is quite good for Belgian beers. So let's crack this open. Oh, it is fizzy. It's really fizzy. Ah, now I've learned from this. I've got a beer towel down here underneath, so if it overflows, that's fine. So it's really, really lively. So let's get it straight in the glass. There is quite a lot of sediment in the bottom, so I have to be really, really careful and pour this as slowly as I can. A huge amount of head is coming out here. Let's try and get that in shot. You can see that. So I've been sitting upright for ages, so I'm not quite sure what happens here, but I'll leave that a little bit in the bottom there. Um, I, I really tried to pour this slowly, but it's just gone absolutely crazy. It says clear yellow blonde beneath a robust white head. That is a robust white head. No, it's just not that clear. And uh, maybe it just wasn't sitting. It was standing upright for, for hours. Um, so I'm not quite sure what happened there, but there we go. It says young, it smells of honey and hops. So... It does smell of honey. It said later it becomes a different smell. Um, the breweries say they recommend drinking this beer well before the best of four dates to appreciate the effects of dr the dry hopping they have. Um, so dry hopping returns in the taste. We'll sit up there for a minute, out of the way. While oh, that's billowing away, as I say, it does look quite hazy. There's a few bits in it. Now, as I say, I couldn't do anything about it. It was... I've had to leave that much in the bottle because it went completely crazy. So there we go. That's that. So I haven't had it on its side or anything. So weird. Right. So bitterness is important for this beer, apparently. It says abundant use is made of the flowery and fragrant nugget hop. And that's from the local hop grown area of Popperinge, which is in Belgium. I've never heard of the hops. It's a Belgian hop. That's new for me. Uh, an effect intensified by dry hop in the lagering, dry hop in the lagering, the Lagrim beer in a tank for a month. Um, that's why the, it says this pronounced hop character always explains why the brewery recommends the, the, the beer well before it's uh, best before date. Uh, this is fizzing away like a like a crazy person. Um, do crazy people fizz away? Probably not. Um, it's not disappearing. I'm going to have to just drink it because it's, it's not going anywhere in this head. So uh, I'm going to get a mouthful of head. That sounded awful. Oh dear. Cheers.
Okay. Um, is it's not hoppy as in the sort of the American or the sort of the IPAs we have these days. Uh, it's hoppy as in a Belgian hoppy way. Um, it's very bitter, but in a quite a nice way. It tastes very like a summery beer. You can see it's been a great beer in the summer. Um, or even just the spring, like on the sort of, this would be a great beer to have as your first alfresco pint of the year. It's really fizzy, it's properly still fizzing away in my mouth. Um, it's, it's so, it's trying to explain um, what it tastes of. It's, it tastes like a Blondale. The business is very strong. From the, from the hops, um, it, it doesn't, it does say, it's another one, actually, this one does taste of 8%, this one does taste boozy, um, it's got a strong, quite a strong taste to it, oh, excuse me, and it's so, sorry, I'm belching, because it's so, so, I mean, look at it, that, 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 that froth on the top there is going nowhere, it's just, it's, it's just sitting there like ice cream, um, so it's, Clearly, this is ferments quite well on the bottom. I mean, I can see a huge amount of yeast there sitting just just lodged at the bottom of the of the of the bottle there. So this is one that obviously secondary ferments for ages, and they say that. I mean, I assume this one hasn't been. I bought this two two or three days ago, so it hasn't been sitting around for ages. And hopefully, the the beer shop didn't have it sit around for ages. So it's obviously still quite fresh. The yeast was still, you know doing its thing for the, the last whatever month um, and that's why you've got this huge amount of car natural sort of natural carbonation from the yeast and the hop still tastes young um, it's yeah it's a, I definitely have this again it's a very it's a very pleasant beer uh, I think it says it does say they occasionally have it on tap a uh, good place to sample it is the brewery tap during the summer months so it might well have to go to the brewery tap in some months to have this probably how it should be and actually a full glass of this would probably be really, really nice to have uh, on, on sort of outside the terrace of the brewery. Uh, apparently, it, you can enjoy the terrace overlooking a peaceful rural scene, the quiet is only broken by chickens, cows, and of course, the merry sounds of a full house dedicated drinkers. But I'm going to leave it there because I'm always on eight minutes. So, like, comment, subscribe. Which, you know, I won't do the finger pointing. Uh, have you had our beer before? Have I done it wrong? I've probably done it wrong. It's a good beer though, so it can't be that wrong. Uh, and I'll see you in another beer review soon. Goodbye.